Hello everyone, this is Brian James from Rhino3D.com and in this Rhino 5 video tutorial I'll be talking to you about materials, environments, lighting, and in general how to visualize your models in Rhino now. So I have a model here with a bunch of different parts and I'll assign a separate material to the different parts but in order to see that in the viewport I need to be in a display mode that, that shows me the rendered material. So if I go over into the display panel there's a drop down list here and it tells me that I'm in shaded so I'll go down to rendered and I still see the model in white but now I see it with some shadows on it because I'm in the rendered display mode the background right now is using the rendered settings and that's accounting for this gray color so if I go over into the environments panel you can see the background is right now set to solid color and you can click on this color swatch and change the background color to whatever you want. You can also click on this little arrow to the right of the color field and use an eyedropper to pick color off of somewhere else on your screen or copy and paste a color from one color field into another somewhere else in Rhino. I'll change to an environment and then click the plus symbol here and create a basic environment. This basic environment now is controlling the visible background set in the rendered display mode because we're still using the rendered settings. You can override this through the drop down menu here to be a solid color or a gradient or a set image file for instance. You can also add an image to an environment and these images will wrap into the spherical space around the model. A common projection type for images that are used in environments is called equirectangular and a couple examples of this are included in the libraries panel already for you. You can go into the libraries panel, open up the environments folder and you'll have three examples of what I'm talking about. You can find more high dynamic range environments in this projection online or on the food4rhino.com website. I'll left click and hold and move the Rhino interior environment to the environments panel and then I can double click on that and you can see how it changes the background. But the model right now just has this default white material. There's really no gloss or reflection at all on this material so we're not seeing that environment reflected yet. I'll go back into the libraries panel here and I want to get back to the root directory that gets installed with Rhino that has all the materials and everything that I can start dragging and dropping. And the fastest way to do that is to just click on the little wrench icon here and go to rendered content and that'll bring you back to that root. I'll go into plastic, drag and drop this plastic high gloss and you can see the um, sheen that you get, that specular highlight that you get right away, but it's not reflecting the environment or noticeably so because the environment is all gray. So I'll go back to that environment panel, switch to the one with the HDR environment, and you can already see the effect of using one of these types of images. I don't want to see the environment through what is the ground plane here, the surface underneath. So the fastest way to make the environment not seen in that area is to turn on the ground plane in Rhino. So I'll go into the ground plane panel and just check on. Now if you have a view of your model like this and you don't want to see the environment in the background you can disable it as part of the display mode. So we could just go into background here instead of use render settings we can say solid color and the render display mode is still using that environment for the reflections but we don't have to look at it. And I'll start dragging and dropping some other materials. Let's see, go into the metal section, grab the silver, and the silver will double as a chrome here. And if you have an object selected in the scene, you can go over into your materials panel and you'll see instances of the materials you've added to this Rhino file so far from the library. These are separate from the swatches in the library. These stay untouched. They won't be edited. So they just get added to this materials panel as soon as you drag and drop them. And so I have the silver here that I can highlight 
and then right click over and I see a whole choice of other things that I can do with this material swatch such as save it to an RMTL file. But right now I'll just choose this top option which is to assign to selection because that's another way that I can assign materials. You can also take a material and duplicate it through that right click menu and I can drag and drop that to different parts of the model and then change the color of that accordingly to whatever my design goal is. I think I'll change this to a lighter green. And I think this chuck would look better if it had a texture to it. So let me go back to the libraries panel. Go into the plastic section. There's a textured plastic. And you can see this has a bump to it. Let me go into the materials panel, select that swatch, and the textured plastic material, this template, has an image in the bump channel already. If I click on that image, it takes me one level deeper into the material, and here I have some controls for how much this image is mapped in the bump channel. So I'll lock the U and V repeat values together by clicking this little link icon, and then I'll just change one of them and press enter and that'll keep it uniform in both directions. I think I'll add a medium gloss to the trigger here. And back in my materials panel, just make it a darker color. Let me get a view where I can explain just a little bit about the gloss slider here. If you have the gloss slider further to the left, you get a big big bright sheen spot like that. The gloss is spread out and if it's further to the right it gets more condensed and you get a brighter but smaller spot of gloss. And I'll add this to that one as well. There we go. Okay, so right now what we're looking at is all done on the graphics card. So this is an OpenGL displayed viewport and that OpenGL viewport can be captured to an image file through the display toolbar group. So there's an icon here with a camera on it and if you left click on that icon you'll capture the active viewport and the size of the active viewport to a file. If you right click here, you'll capture it to a clipboard so then you could paste it in a, another program. If you want to capture this viewport larger than what you see on your screen or larger than your monitor can actually even capture, then use the dash viewport capture to file and it'll be this uh, dash view capture to file is the name of the command. If you use the dash view capture to file, you'll first be asked to browse for a location for the image and then you'll get a width and height field here. You can click up in the command line and you could set this to really as large as your graphics card will allow you to capture an image and usually that's in at least 15,000 by 15,000 for most modern graphics cards. You can do a lot more with these display modes too. If I go back into the display panel, you can see a bunch of general checkboxes for controls for this model. And you can turn on things like surface edges or ISO curves. In this case, these are a bunch of mesh objects. They, they were converted from a NURBS model. And if I turn on mesh wires, you can see that gets combined with the material display. This is actually one of the models that's in the iPhone, iPad, Rhino 3DM viewer. And you can email it or download it. So explore these settings when you're doing any sort of visualization with the rendered display mode. If you click on the main edit rendered settings button at the bottom, 
you'll be brought to the full page in options and here you could select the top display modes and you could make a copy and then work on that copy of this display mode. Anytime you make a change to a setting in a display mode it'll be displayed in a blue type so you know that if you select it you can always click restore to defaults to bring it back to the the default Rhino settings. Now the next thing I'd like to talk about is lighting this model. So if you're going to actually do a rendering not just displayed on the graphics card like this you would be able to light the model in whatever fashion the render engine you're using supports. And I have just Rhino Render as the active render engine right now. So if I go over into the Render Tools toolbar group, I can see a bunch of light objects. And I'm going to make a few rectangular lights. So let me get back out here to my four views. And I'll make a rectangular light using my grid snap here just to keep things uniform. I'm going to make a rectangular light here and drag it in front of my model. And you can see that the shadow gets cast in the rendered display mode. Now you can make rectangular lights in V5 by choosing a target for them but I want to rotate this exactly at 45 degrees so I just made it straight out in the right view here and then I'm going to select it and use the rotate command from zero. I'll hold down shift and left click and then type 45 and enter. And then I'll mirror this across the x-axis to make a copy of it exactly at 45 in the other direction or 90 degrees from where it was. And then I'll make another rotated rectangular light here but this time I'll do a copy so I'll make copy equals yes and I'll rotate it from zero again to almost directly behind the model and then enter. So now I have three rectangular lights surrounding the model. This is a traditional three-point lighting setup and we'll call this one the key light and this one should be the most powerful one. And then this is the fill and that's slightly less bright. And then the dimmest of all will be what's called the rim light which is right behind the model. And you can adjust the power of any light object in object properties and then the light section when that light is selected. So I'll make the key 80% intensity, and I'll make the fill 50, and then I'll make that rim 20. Now another type of light that you can use in your display mode here is called the skylight. So if you go over into the sun panel, there's a checkbox here for the skylight. And if you turn that on, you'll be using the color of that high dynamic range image in the environment. Now this looks pretty good but it's not as realistic as I'd like so I'm going to use a free plugin that we're making called Neon as well to show you how good this can look in the viewport directly. So I'll go back into my display panel here and from the drop-down list after you've installed Neon and I'll, I'll put a link to it in the notes for this video you'll have a choice here called Ray Traced with Neon and my environment image needs to be lowered in intensity so I'll go over into my environment click on the texture takes me one level deeper into the environment and then this HDR high dynamic range multiplier field I'll change that to be a quarter of the value 0.25 and now we're actually ray tracing which means that the light is bouncing around between the objects it's not just 
um, sort of like a video game effect as in the OpenGL viewport, the rendered display viewport. It's more realistic. So one of the other things that we can do here with these lights is we can adjust the intensity of the shadow. And I'm going to leave the neon viewport up here in the top right just so I can see what effect that has. So if I lower the shadow intensity of all three, I think that'll balance this image out a little bit. I don't want to see as strong of a shadow from the light behind the model. One area that you'll notice a big change between the rendered display mode and neon is if you have any sort of transparency in your materials because neon will actually calculate the refraction properly. And I can show that by going into the transparent material section in the library and I'll use plexiglass here so that we can see through that housing. Now anytime you have transparency and refraction those material properties are traditionally longer to calculate and this ray traced viewport in neon is happening all off of the CPU so the faster your processor in your computer the faster the rendering will calculate and also the um, less time uh, you'll have to wait. I guess that's really the same thing but this, um, this ray traced viewport is entirely based on how big a viewport you have, how strong a processor you have, and the combination of materials. Uh, there are some acceleration cards that just went on the market from the company called Caustic. So there's an R2500 card you can get for a desktop system and that'll speed up uh, Neon as well. But if you don't have one of those, uh, Neon will just use the CPU. And that's an example of using materials, environments, and lighting in Rhino 5. Thanks for watching.